Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today going to be another uh, genetics probability problem. So here is a problem, consider three hybrid cross of heterozygous parents such as and here is the genotypes of the parents. So two questions. Question number one, what is the probability for progeny of being dominant for two and recessive for one gene? And second question, what is the probability for progeny of being dominant for one and recessive for two genes? So, uh, as usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first, and when you would be ready, you can run video again, and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So, let's take a look at the genotypes of the parents. So, here is the parent 1, here is the parent 2. As you see, genotype is absolutely the same. Heterozygous for the gene D, and this parent also heterozygous. Parent 1 heterozygous for gene R, and second parent, and for the last uh, third um, gene also, both parents are heterozygous. So, here as you see, each parent has six alleles and three genes. That means uh, that this organism is diploid. So, uh, sometimes, by the way, some plants can be um, triploid or tetraploid, pentaploid, hexaploid. So, just looking at this genotype, we can say that this is diploid organism because each gene represented by two alleles. So, in order to solve this problem, we have to know how to build a simple Punnett square. So, let's consider gene D, so parent 1 heterozygous, parent 2 also heterozygous. So, let's uh, build a simple Punnett square. And if we build a Punnett square, we can predict genotypes of the progeny. And we also can predict a frequency of different genotypes in the progeny. So, in the first cell we would have capital D, capital D, capital D, small d here, capital D and small d here, and small d, small d here. So, because we have here three different genes, and uh, we... Uh, consider that these genes segregate independently. Uh, that means that these genes are on the different chromosomes. So we, when we calculate the probability for the progeny to be specific uh, genotype or phenotype, we can uh, separate large problem to smaller problems. We can work with each gene separately in order to find the probability of the progeny to belong to certain genotype or phenotype. So as you see, according to our Punnett square, uh, 3 out of 4 in the progeny would belong to the dominant phenotype. So we have 1 and 2 genotypes here, but these two Genotypes would make one phenotype. Three quarters would be uh, would show uh, dominant phenotype, and one quarter would show recessive phenotype. So once again, we have here one, two, three genotypes, and we have here two phenotypes. So. Our question, what is the probability for the progeny of being dominant for two and recessive for one uh, trait? So, um, each gene stands for some kind of trait. What kind of trait? It is not important right now. So, uh, as you see, we would see the same picture for each gene if we build a Punnett square for each pair of genes. So, 
that means that, uh, for, the, for example, for the gene D, probability that progeny would show dominant phenotype would be 3 quarters. For the gene R, probability would be the same, 3 quarters. And uh, the question is, what is the probability that two um, traits would be dominant and one would be recessive? So for the third, let's take probability according to power, Punnett square, one quarter. So, as you see, because this is all independent probabilities, we have to use uh, product rule. So, 3 multiplied by 3, 9, multiplied by 1, 9. And here we have 4 multiplied by 4, 16, and multiplied by 4, 64. So, 9 out of 64. Combinations would be when we would have two uh, dominant traits and one recessive. But this is not the end of the story. Uh, because order is not given in our problem, for example, if order would be given, uh, if question would be what is the probability that for the trait uh, coded by gene D, uh, progeny would have dominant phenotype, for the gene R also would have dominant genotype, and for the trait Q uh, would be recessive uh, phenotype. Uh, this would be our answer. But because order is not given, we may have different orders here. For example, uh, we may have three quarters probability for the gene uh, D or trait D to be uh, dominant, we may have probability one quarter that gene R would be recessive, uh, would show recessive phenotype, and we may have uh, one, oh sorry, three quarters probability that gene Q would show dominant phenotype. So once again, we just multiply all these probabilities and we would get 9 over 64. And also this is true for the first trait uh, coded by a gene D. We may have also um, for this trait we can get, as you see, one quarter probability that this trait would be recessive and second one we have three quarters and third um, gene q or trait q we also may have three quarters so as you see once again we have to multiply all these independent probabilities and we are going to get 9 over 64. once again the question was uh, what is the probability of progeny being dominant for two and recessive for one trait? So, the first one can be recessive and another two can be dominant. Or the first can be dominant, then recessive and dominant. And also, we may have a different order. First um, trait can be dominant, second can be dominant, and third can be recessive. So now we have to add all these three probabilities. So we have to use uh, some rule 964 plus 964 plus 964. If we add all these numbers, we are going to get 27 over 64. And this is going to be our answer for the first question and uh, second question what is the probability for the progeny being dominant for one and recessive for two so all the same rules all the same steps but this time uh, two out of three have to be 
uh, according to our question uh, recessive genotype so let uh, the first one be recessive the second uh, trait be recessive and the third one uh, to be dominant and probability is three quarters once again we multiply all the three probabilities and we are going to get 3 over 64 so if we once again there are three different combinations exist uh, when second um, variant second uh, trait would have um, would be dominant and this two would be recessive and third would be when first one uh, first um, phenotype and trait would be dominant and two uh, would be recessive so we have to add 3 over 64 plus 3 over 64 plus 3 over 64 so uh, that means or we have to multiply by 3 so 3 pro possible combinations exist so we are going to get 9 over 64 and this number represents probability that uh, two traits would be recessive and one would be dominant in order to save a space uh, i didn't make three um, calculations like in this example it is straightforward and easy to understand that we just uh, change places here three times because three uh, variants exist so we multiply this number by three and this is going to be our answer uh, this could be the end of the video but let's check our answers so uh, once again we have probability that two out of three traits would be dominant and this is 27 out of 64 probability we have also probability that two traits would be recessive and one dominant and this is probability so once again we have to add these probabilities 9 over 64 so th this number um, tell us that total number of combinations is 64 but here uh, we have uh, 36 combinations on top so we don't have uh, one combination where all three traits would be uh, dominant and this is going to be three quarters multiplied by three quarters and multiplied by three quarters so this is going to be 27 over 64 for the probability that all three traits would show dominant phenotype and the last one would be probability that all three traits would be in progeny would be um, homozygous recessive or would be uh, traits would be recessive and uh, the probability would be one quarter multiplied by one quarter and by one quarter so plus one over 64 so we are going to get 64 over 64 which equal to one or to 100 percent so our problem is solved correctly and this is probability that uh, two traits out of three would be dominant and uh, one trait out of three would be recessive and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video goodbye